Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about finance, econometrics, data analytics, and much, much more. My name is Seva, and today we're going to investigate a quite interesting procedure that can help with portfolio selection in case where the investable universe is very large. What I mean by it is that every investor nowadays has hundreds or maybe even thousands of stocks, bonds, commodities and so on uh, that they can include in their portfolio and uh, the goal is to maybe narrow it down a bit to a select few that then will be put through some uh, portfolio optimizer uh, because uh, those optimizers typically work quite poorly when the number of assets is very large. Uh, imagine running an optimizer with, say, a thousand assets. Uh, the uh, computational time would be very large, very long. Uh, the algorithms might poorly converge. And sometimes when the number of assets is larger than the number of time periods, some algorithms just don't work properly. So for that, the uh, today's tutorial is quite crucial. Obviously, I'm showcasing the application on a more user-friendly uh, case where we've got 20 assets. Uh, those are just top 20 stocks from S&P 500, nothing uh, crazy. Uh, but the uh, logic of the algorithm is robust uh, and can be scaled up uh, indefinitely to any number of assets that you might encounter. So the idea is, how do we uh, select the best by some metric, some objective criterion or set of criteria, uh, assets from those 20, uh, without resorting to any fundamental or other uh, screening criteria? The idea is quite ingenious, and it is quite uh, nicely related to the theory of efficient portfolios uh, that goes back to Markowitz where essentially we are looking at assets that are not dominated by other assets in some risk return properties we care about. Without further ado, let me start with some simple calculations and then we can apply the technique, which is called layers of maxima. So for our 20 assets, we have got daily data for a 10 year period. Uh, so we just calculate daily returns. Again, here it's easier to calculate them in percentages already. So the prices today div divided by prices yesterday times 100 minus 100. So that gives us a return in uh, percentages, minus 1.78%. We we'll drag it across all 20 assets and enforce it throughout the sample. And now uh, the idea is to calculate three risk return uh, related metrics that will then use to determine which assets are efficient and which assets are dominated by other assets and therefore can be excluded. And uh, well, mean and variance are the two obvious candidates. Uh, those are the axes of the risk return plane in uh, the Markowitz uh, portfolio optimization uh, algorithm after all. So we calculate just mean returns. Yes, so just simple daily averages for all our 20 assets and also daily variances, variance for the sample, so vr.s. But the problem is, uh, in terms of just those two characteristics, there might not be too many dominated assets. So the reduction in our investable universe might not be uh, sufficient, uh, especially if we start with hundreds of thousands of them. So the idea is to look at a three-dimensional, or in a general case, more than two-dimensional uh, layers of maxima. And uh, the procedure that was proposed in a paper by uh, Yushchuk et al. Uh, in Quarterly Review of uh, Economics and Finance in 2022 was to also look at some metric that describes covariance of uh, our asset with other assets. Obviously, uh, the covariance structure 
is typically modeled using the covariance matrix, uh, but well, the covariance matrix is multidimensional. So how would we narrow it down to just a number to determine which assets are dominated and which are efficient? Well, let's first calculate the matrix and then decide what to do with it. So here, we just use the matrix uh, approach that would be most um, straightforward given our data. So we use matrix multiplication. We refer to transposed demeaned returns. So transpose of our return matrix minus the respective means. And then we multiply it on the right by just the matrix of demeaned returns. So the non-transposed matrix. And that uh, gives us just the product. To uh, calculate the covariance, we need to scale by t minus 1, where t is the number of periods. So we can count returns in any of the columns. So let's count NVIDIA returns, for instance. Uh, we've got, we've got 2,477 uh, of daily observations. And so we can use that to calculate our daily covariances. So N minus 1 or T minus 1. Uh, that produces the covariance matrix. And uh, here, in any row or any column, for that matter, we have got uh, the covariances of each asset with all other assets. And the idea is that the sum of a column, for example, the sum of the NVIDIA column here, gives us some numerical representation of how tightly NVIDIA is correlated with other assets in the list. Uh, albeit it's not a perfect representation of its covariance structure, it's a good enough proxy to use in our layers of maxima algorithm. So this number will tell us the amount of covariance risk in the NVIDIA stock price movements. And because we are double counting the NVIDIA variance itself, we can see here on the diagonal, the variances of stocks themselves are uh, represented quite naturally. We can simply subtract it from our covariance measure so we don't double count. And that can be also enforced throughout all columns uh, of our matrix, uh, given us the covariance metric for all 20 of our stocks. And now we need to look at efficient or dominated assets. For that, we need to see whether uh, some of our assets are objectively worse than some others in all three dimensions. So for instance, we have got NVIDIA here that has the highest expected return of them all, or the highest historical return of them all, uh, at least. That means that it will never be dominated by any other assets, because in terms of mean, it will never be dominated. But in terms of variance, for instance, we have got uh, NVIDIA variance at quite a high figure, and there are plenty of stocks here that have variance that's lower than that of NVIDIA, as you can see. So what we need to keep in mind is that for mean, or for average return, the higher the better, and for variance and covariance, the lower the better. So to calculate how many stocks dominate this particular stock, we need to use count ifs. And here we can refer to all of our means and count how many means are greater, so objectively better, than the mean of this particular stock. Then, to check for dominance in terms of variance, we need to check how many of the stock variances are objectively better, so lower, because variances or risks lower the better, are lower than the variance of this particular asset. And then for covariance is the same, the lower uh, the covariance, the better. How many covariances are objectively lower than the covariance of this particular asset. And you can see for NVIDIA, no stocks dominated. That's quite uh, understandable because it has the highest mean of them all. But as we drag it across, we'll see that the picture is different for other stocks. For instance, Amazon is dominated by three other stocks. Three other stocks are objectively better than it according to uh, all three characteristics. 
for instance, for ExxonMobil here, we have got one stock that's been better than it according to all three other metrics. Uh, and we can even try and see which one that stock is. You can spot that it's Walmart. Walmart has higher mean with ExxonMobil. It has lower variance than ExxonMobil and lower covariance sum than ExxonMobil. Uh, but we don't care which stocks dominate, we just care which are dominated. That means that those can be removed from our uh, set, from our investable universe, and we can proceed uh, optimizing our portfolio with a lower number of stocks, so reducing the dimensionality and uh, speeding up uh, our uh, optimization process without sacrificing any particularly good assets to it. Uh, the final change I'll make to this formula is to just implement a sign function on top because we don't care how many assets uh, dominate this particular asset. We just care whether it's undominated, so efficient, in that case it will be zero, or it's dominated by one asset or more, and in this case it will be a dominated asset and we'll have one here. Uh, the idea is that this procedure can be applied sequentially, so, for instance, from just one iteration of this procedure, we have removed Amazon, Google, Meta, JP Morgan, Oracle, Visa, ExxonMobil. So, we have removed uh, seven stocks from our list. Uh, and the iterations can be uh, made quite seamlessly. So we, can just so, we can just copy the sheet. That will be our second iteration of, of the algorithm. And here we can simply delete the columns with all the dominated stocks. And we can see that in this case, the model has recalculated itself and there are no more stocks that are objectively dominated now. So we've got 13 stocks, all of which are efficient. Uh, and again, we can see that the covariance matrix is recalculated now. Uh, and the covariances are now updated so that uh, only the stocks that remain uh, are left uh, in consideration. Uh, but especially if you've got loads of stocks, this might not be the case. You could continue this procedure, uh, you'll get more stocks that are dominated, you'll remove them and proceed until either uh, you've got a number of stocks that's uh, small enough for your models to run, or until, as we've got in this case, all of the 13 stocks we've got left are indeed efficient. So none of them are dominated by other assets. And this is the maximum layers algorithm for reducing the dimensionality of portfolio optimization problems that can also be used as a stock screening or portfolio selection algorithm with a very simple implementation in Excel and a very uh, neat uh, relationship to the foundations of uh, portfolio management theory uh, as far back as Harry Markowitz. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm to see any further suggestions for videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much and stay tuned.